So in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of my process and um, research to create my upcoming piece on the human hand, which I thought you might find neat. The uh, first thing I'm going to show you is the series of drawings I've created to get a better understanding of some basic hand anatomy. This is based off of an x-ray of my hand. This is me that I've had recently. And I've uh, drawn several features of the hand here, which overlay. So the, um, the bones here, we have the um, radius and ulnar. This is the um, posterior view of the hand here versus the anterior view. Um, so we have the radius and ulnar, the carpal bones, metacarpals, and phalanges. Um, what you call this is a metacarpal phalangeal joint versus a um, inner phalangeal joint. Um, this would be the proximal phalangeal joint, interphalangeal, interphalangeal joint, versus the distal interphalangeal joint, which is farther away, distal, proximal. Um, the carpal bones here are really neat and extremely complicated and hard to draw, um, especially in um, unique positions, which you don't find in anatomy books. <laughs> so um, here we have, this is the trapezium and the trapezoid, which are a little closer than you would normally see them in an anatomical drawing, which is kind of why my x-ray exists. Um, so trapezium, trapezoid, uh, capitate, hamate, um, triquetrum with the pisiform underneath, which is here, this little dude, um, the lunate, and the scaphoid. Then we have the ligaments. These guys here connect joints, connect bone to bone. And then here we have tendons, which connect muscle to bone. So a couple really simple things that were interesting to me when I first started studying the hand was that one, there are basically no muscles in the fingers here, in the phalanges. Um, and then a lot of the movement of the hand is uh, due to muscles that aren't in the hand at all, but in the forearm. So for the sort of greater movements of the hand, the flexion and extension of the hand and wrist is due to um, on the uh, palmar or anterior side of the forearm is for the flexion. Um, so like, then there's also flexion um, for the fingers here, the flexion digitorum muscles and tendons are here and then the extensor muscles are on the posterior side and they are also there for the fingertips so this action here is being originated with muscles that are on the back of the arm so that was pretty neat so we see here um, these ligaments connect these muscles to the fingers here these are the um, uh, flexor digitorum so these are digits, and we have the flexor um, digitorum superficialis and profundus. Um, so the profundus um, connects all the way to the distal phalange, while uh, whereas the uh, uh, extensor superficialis kind of goes underneath and through and connects to I think it's the mid phalange, but I'm not I'm not certain at this moment. So. Um, yeah, but I'm pretty sure that's the, the middle. And then these muscles you see here in the hand, these are the inner osseous on the dorsal side. Um, you have similar ones on the palmar side, which are the lumbrical. Um, and these connect from the bone to um, ligaments. This is the dorsal hood, um, which is that this becomes sort of a fascial sheath over the finger. And um, it connects um, right here. This is the this is the first inner osseous muscles here and they connect to the bone of the first metacarpal here and the second metacarpal here. So that's pretty neat. Um, this guy here is I think this is the is it the adductor or the ab I think it's the abductor minimi. The minimi is the very cute name for the uh, pinky. It's the digiti minimi. Um, and so, like, uh, from my understanding, ab abduct is uh, away from the body and adduct is towards. So, yeah, I think this is the abductor. You can see that muscle kind of get activated there with that 
motion away. Um, what's not included in this drawing is one of my favorite features, um, which is the retinaculum, which is a fascial sheath that goes over this whole region here. Um, the tendons pass through in specific compartments and it um, allows like smooth gliding. This is a neat reference image that shows it sliced up with the ligaments passing through. And you see these, yeah. So that's pretty neat. Um, this is a drawing I'm working on um, based off of that photo where you can see some of the revealed anatomy that we just mentioned. I have a pretty good sketch so far of the right hand. There are um, quite a few good reference images that I've found um, of all the features you see here. Not so much with the uh, left hand, which shows the um, medial side of the hand, which for some reason I, I just can't find very good images of the medial side of the hand is mostly just the lateral side of the hand. Um, but so here are a lot of the same features I mentioned. You can see here the first interosseous muscles connecting to the hood over the finger. Um, and then this is the um, um, pollicis longus and pollicis brevis, which I don't think I mentioned. Yeah, here, pollicis brevis and pollicis longus for the thumb, which are super neat. So to handle the fact that I can't find good references for this position, which is an extremely important part of the image, obviously, I went to a bone library in town um, and was able to interact with real human bone um, and, you know, get to see these bones from all sides. I was also able to take a bag of um, loose finger bones um, and put them together to build a hand, which I feel like um, utilized my whole brain um, and so I got a much better sort of visceral understanding of the, the anatomy of the hand from having to create it. And then I was able to articulate um, uh, hands that were put together. Um, and these are some of my sketches from that. So you can see some of the anatomy here. This one's pretty cool. The next one is better. Um, and I don't know if you can really tell but this shows a better understanding of the bone after my experience at the bone library. One of the um, most distinct features that I see is how clearly defined the flat surface of the dorsal side of the metacarpals, metacarpals are, which I did not realize from the drawings I had seen how flat they were. At least the, the metacarpals I was looking at were really flat. Um, so that was really interesting. I love this feature, this sort of spin and twist on the fourth metacarpal. I think it's really beautiful. Um, and I have a much better rendered um, detail of the articulation of these joints here, all from my experience at the Bone Library, which I'm hoping to go back to um, just to, to finish this up. My, my next step is to make sure that I have the placement of the um, radius and ulnar properly. The ulnar bone, which is um, here, is pretty easy in that it remains pretty straight. When you move your arm around, the radius rotates around that, which makes it really difficult to um, guess the position of with a person standing there. I guess guess isn't the right word, but to design the layout of. And I think I'm getting a better understanding of it, but I'm going to talk later about how I worked that out. So um, I'm feeling pretty good now with my layout of the, the bones of the hands for these guys. And my plan is this week to do a small um, test painting numberism drawing or to start working on it. Um, which is a smaller scale than the final um, numbers I'm drawing will be. So it'll be a 16 by 20 on gesso board. And I'm going to take the sketches that I have here and my experience in the bone library and all of the reading that I'm doing, which is a lot of reading, um, and get started and see where we go. Um, there are still some questions I haven't answered about how I want the anatomy to fade off on the sides, but I'm pretty solid here and I want to want to get going. So... I hope that um, this has been interesting to you um, and that I haven't messed up any anatomical terms too badly. <laughs> if I have, please tell me. I'm uh, 
I'm super open to new information. I'm not. Yeah, please tell me. <laughs> uh, yeah. And ask me any questions if you have any. And thanks for watching.